What's up everybody, it is Wabacha, and I wanted to do a little video, a crap sesh for. I've done this before in the past, and I think the last time I did one was during Essence League, I can't remember, but this is just where I'm going to be alking a, a lot of jewelry or accessories, and I'm gonna be doing some other things as well. Like you can see, I have some Huber circlets in, in my stash as well. And I'm gonna be using some orbs of binding since they're essentially a free alk jewel, <laughs> a free alk jewelers and some fusings. So hopefully we get something good out of that. But for the crafting sessions, what we are looking to do is either get something uh, good for ourselves that we could use or something worth selling. More often than not, it is something worth selling. And one of the reasons why this is pretty effective or a good way to make currency is because you don't ever really lose out on this. You know, you're going to buy some some alchemy orbs for uh, for chaos orbs, and it's a if you don't at least make some currency, you usually break even. So, and there are some ways to hedge your bet that I'm going to talk about uh, in this video. So, before we get started, I also want to talk about uh, what recipes that you should know that I'm going to be using, and this is a little bit more pertinent for the new players, as I'm sure we have a lot of them out there. So the first recipe that I'll be talking about is the amulet and uh, skill gems recipe. Now this allows you to take any rare amulet and place it in with three skill gems. They have to be one of each color, red, green, blue, and the vendor will give you an onyx amulet. Now, with that said, it also, and this is a something worth mentioning, a lot of people do uh, forget this, but also, you can use it with corrupted amulets. Now, generally, when you have a corrupted amulet, you cannot, you can't craft it anymore. You can't do anything, anything with it. You know that goes with any corrupted item. But with this recipe, it actually bypasses it and it, it essentially acts as a free scour. Uh, so, this only works with amulets, though. So you could do this. You could do a version of this with other recipes, but for amulets, it's. Uh, three skill gems, one of each color, and it will give you a normal onyx amulet. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be alking some amulets as well, and I actually prefer to alk amulets that are onyx bases, uh, just because they will have the most uh, likelihood of, I don't know, what am I trying to say here? What I'm trying to say here is that it really sucks if you get an amulet that, say, is really good for a spellcaster, but it's on a on a lapis, on a lapis amulet, or a coral amulet, okay? Um, one, you shouldn't really be alking either of those, but say you did, uh, then all of a sudden, the implicit of the amulet is not nearly as valuable as it could be, and it could potentially hurt the value of the and peace that you have. So that's actually why I go for Onyx Amulets because, you know, getting up to 16 all attributes is is good for everybody. It's it's just kind of the safest way, like I said earlier, to kind of hedge your bet with the items that you're going to be crafting. So there's that, cool. And then the other thing I want to show you while I have the vendor window open is that this is a little bit more in depth, but when you have an item that has uh, six properties, any rare item could have six affixes, three prefixes and three suffixes. You can't get four prefixes and two suffixes or, you know, any, you can't get any other combination other than three and three. Whenever you have an item that is full, hey, that wasn't even, <laughs> oh, we could actually use that. But whenever you have an item that is full, you cannot get all or not uh, I'm sorry you can't get any more craps on there and you will get an orb of augmentation from the vendor now this is pretty good to know because sometimes you'll have items that look like they're full like this one right here but it's actually not so if you ever have an item I should have realized this when I was pulling it out for an example but if you have an item that has um, like a hybrid mod on there, you could just check and be like, okay, well, does this have, you know, something available? In this instance, this item actually has uh, a suffix open, I believe, if I if I recall correctly. But like I said, if you have an item that is full, that can't be crafted any further, 
the vendor will give you an augmentation for it, and that's actually pretty good enough. The other thing I want you guys to know, the other recipe that I'm going to be using is the two stone recipe. Now the two stone recipe is another way for you to hedge your bet, but essentially when you put one of each two stone in the vendor window, the vendor will give you back a prismatic ring. So a prismatic ring could potentially give you up to 30 resist, not all resist, but 30 total resist, while a two stone will give you up to 32 total resist. So a two stone is a little bit better for resist, but a prismatic ring you know, kind of falls into the same category of a, an onyx amulet. It gives you everything, it covers a lot of bases, and it's just a way to help. But the other side of this is actually, once you al or use your alchemy orb on three of these, and these are all rare, the vendor will give you back a rare prismatic ring. So it's like a free, uh, just it's just a free do-over. And it, honestly, I've gotten a lot of really good rings out of it. And sometimes the rings that I've gotten out of it, their value, had they been on another base, wouldn't have been as high if they, you know, if they weren't on that prismatic ring. Maybe even for the two stone as well. But I don't know, that didn't really make sense. Anyway, it's just another way that we're going to be hedging our bet. Cool. That's that. Then the other thing that I also want to talk about before we really get started is that uh, way the way we're going to be checking if items have either prefixes or suffixes available is we're going to be using the crafting benches. And what you could do is let me grab an example in here. Uh, there's one. So this ring it has a suffix open, okay? Throw it in here. If it had a prefix open, we'd be able to craft mana on here. Like, let's just say for some reason this evasion was a, was a, not a prefix and it was a suffix. We'd be able to put uh, mana on here. But I use the website poeaffix.net. I recommend you guys check it out. And I just re recommend you guys looking at it because it also helps you identify things while you're mapping. If you can notice that a prefix or a suffix is open, you could recognize that an item has some potential value a lot quicker than a lot of other people. And that puts you at an advantage because you're more likely to sell items that are pretty good. So we're gonna be using our crafting benches to check if items have, or what prefixes or suffixes are available on an item. All right. The other thing too is whenever you are doing these crafting sessions, another way to hedge your bet other than the items and the bases that we are crafting is using them in chaos recipes. A lot of people do that. I personally myself just vendor them because I could use the alterations and everything else that comes along with it augments. And I, I frequently will run my maps blue and regal them and you need a lot of alterations and orb of, orbs of augmentation in order to do that. You also will notice that in this uh, in this window, I also have some essences that I'm going to be using, and like I said earlier, an orb of binding. So let's go ahead and get started. Normal, boom, and we're just going to out everything. these all right so we had about 80 alks I don't know we had 90 when we started this in our inventory at least and so we spent about 74 uh, 74 alks. So that's about about a 20 chaos investment, give or take. Not to mention that I also, you know, threw in some essence crafting and everything. So let's go ahead and check them. Let's go ahead and start with the hubris <laughs> helms first because I actually kind of I really need a good ES helm so I could continue on with this build. But that is garbage. So no thanks. That is also garbage. And then this one. Yeah, not very good as well. 
the likelihood that any of those were going to turn out really good was pretty low. But that was just kind of a whatever thing. All right, great. So let's look at the belts now. This one has a decent amount of life on it, but only because of its implicit. And it has a prefix and a suffix open. And you could tell because you could throw it in here and you could see that you could get elemental damage on there, which is a prefix. And then you could get another resist on there, which is a suffix. I and mean, it's pretty easy to spot. This is for properties and yeah. So this is something that we'll throw in there. And since, since it has a decent cold roll on it, we'll, we will throw it in our 1C tab. And someone will probably buy it pretty soon. I'm just going to DND this. All right. Back to everything else we were doing. Okay, cool. This is actually pretty good. 12% uh, reduced flash charges used is a pretty popular... Uh, I can't remember if it's a prefix or a suffix, but we could find out right now. Because both armor and life is a prefix. And it is actually a suffix. So what do we have here? We have reduced flash charges use, pretty popular. Uh, two decent uh, resist rolls, pretty good, and a, a good life roll and on the right base as well. So that actually is worth a fair amount, and we will put that to the side because we will price check it a little bit later. This one is not good. It It's lacking a life or ES roll. You would prefer a life roll because of the base. Although if it had a good ES roll and the resists were good and maybe there was another mod on here other than the armor, like say it had armor, good resist rolls, and then wed, okay? And it was on, and it had an ES roll on there too, then it would probably be a candidate for Valor Beam. But ES is not nearly as pop popular anymore, so belts that don't have life on them are going to be less valuable, especially in the meta that we're in. So we're going to put that on the side. All right, this one is actually decent. It's a little bit better than it may seem. While the strength roll is borderline useless, it has an okay life roll. You know, you really want to see 80 plus like on the previous belt. But the 19% chaos resist is is pretty, pretty good. And again, back to the whole meta and how this item rolls into it the chaos resist will be a little bit more valuable now that we have life builds right now that we're going to have fewer ci builds it's going to be a little bit more valuable so we'll throw that over here too this might be a couple of chaos because it let's check i'm pretty sure it has a suffix open which means you could throw another resist on here and yep you could throw another resist on there so if somebody needs a little bit of chaos resist and they only need like 20 fire resist that is an item that they'll buy it's being carried by the chaos resist for its value now we're kind of on a roll of belts today so this belt same as this one uh except a little bit more valuable because the strength roll is at least higher it's the same tier of life roll but it has more life on it and the fire resist roll is pretty good. So, doing, doing all right so far. This one, same as the one earlier. Or no, no, I put this in the wrong area. Not very good. Bender trash. Okay, so <laughs> this amulet, or this, uh, this belt could have been, could have been good had that energy shield roll not been so garbage. But flash charges gain, again, it has a prefix open. So yeah, this is actually okay. You could throw some resist on here, or not resist, um, life on here, and then it becomes a half decent little piece. So that, that will sell. Again, maybe a couple of chaos. I will sell it for a couple of chaos. Someone might see this and think that they're gonna get three or four chaos for it but I'm probably gonna try to sell it for one or two because I would rather just sell it. Man, we're doing decent with the belts. This one's pretty good. It has a pre has two prefixes open, but you can only mastercraft one prefix. So it's essentially just like saying there's a prefix open, but energy shield, uh, decent strength roll and some good resist. This is a Val Orb candidate for sure. Eh. It has life, it has resist, but nothing else. You know, that's as good as a blue belt. In fact, a blue belt is kind of better 
because at least you could regal a blue belt and maybe get a third really good property. And kind of similar. This one has, uh, since the life regen is on there, there's only uh, prefixes available on this. So this is something that maybe could sell for a chaos. And if this had energy shield on it instead of life, would also be good. But it's also still decent enough that someone might want to buy it for a chaos. And then I'm I'm glad that we actually got one that was not good. So we could, you know, not just keep saying, hey, this is okay. All of these belts will sell. You know, most of them will be for one or two chaos. Some of them, like this one, will be for a little bit more. All right, now let's go ahead and go start with some of the rings. First one, not very good. The primary stat is low. Uh, now, like I said earlier, the rarity is something that could either be a prefix or a suffix. So in this case, you don't know if this uh, has either a prefix or a suffix open. Although actually, you could tell that the rarity is a prefix because both the life regen, the intelligence, and the resist are suffixes. So automatically you know but it's, it's still really not that good. If you have a primary stat on a piece of jewelry, you want it to be 30 plus. And the reason that you want it to be 30 plus is so it could replace uh, points like this. Also not good. Yeah, that's just not good. Like I was saying earlier, if you have an item that, uh, you know, it's the primary stat on it is kind of opposite of what would be needed you know, this is this has mana on it. So any character that really wants mana is mostly gonna be in the, like really wants mana, not like everyone could use mana because that's what everyone uses, but say a character that's mind over matter, they're most likely gonna be in the northern part of the tree. So they're going to have a fair bit of intelligence anyway, so they don't need the intelligence. So not good. This one could have been a very good DPS ring had the uh, the physical damage to attacks roll been much better and the accuracy was higher, but it's not. This one has a prefix and a suffix open. This might actually sell for a couple of chaos may or, or one. We'll put that to the side. So this is what I was saying about having an item that kind of has like the right opposite stats. Well, actually, never mind. But it's still pretty decent. Uh, between the accuracy, it's 200 plus, which is good. You have 30 plus intelligence, also good. And then the 50 to maximum mana, decent enough, especially, again, in this meta. So we're going to put this to the side. I don't know how much that one's going to be really worth. A lot of the ones that are really kind of questionable, you know, they're only going to sell for like 1 to 5 chaos. And 5 Chaos is kind of pushing it. It has to clearly be good to sell for 5 Chaos. The ones that I'm really looking for, though, are the items that I could sell for, you know, 15 plus Chaos or a, a couple of Exalts, which I get pretty often whenever you're doing this. So, not good. Not good. This one is actually kind of decent. Uh has good resist on it unfortunately the leech is a little and yeah, the leech is kind of whatever uh but between the good resist and a a fire damage to attacks roll on there and it has a prefix open this is something that you could sell for a couple of chaos or one like someone's just gonna throw uh life on there or something not very good needs more resist not very good since it has its suffixes full it really limits this item quite a bit you know if the energy shield was higher maybe okay so here we go this is actually a pretty good uh ring if you are in need of dexterity and intelligence this is a good ring and it has a tier one life roll on it and it has a fair amount of resist because of the base that it's on and has prefix open so this is something that will probably be on the higher end of what you could sell it for this is probably a five chaos ring pretty pretty standard pretty straightforward 
All right. So this ring, not very good. Let's move these around. All the all the stats on this are too low. Even though the attack speed is is pretty good. Now there's actually only one tier of attack speed on an item that is either Alped. You can get different tiers of attack speed, if I recall correctly, with Essence Crafting. But if you get attack speed, it's five to seven percent. It's pretty good. And honestly, on a piece of jewelry, that's plenty of attack speed. All right. This item, uh, while it's not very good, it's a good example of something that you might think is full, but it actually does have a prefix open on it. So it could be okay, but if I were to sell this, it wouldn't be for more than one chaos. All right, mana, good, good fire resist roll. Uh, the evasion roll is kind of whatever, but it's going to be a little bit more valuable now at this point, I believe. But that's just me. But the dexterity roll isn't very good, so it's not, it's not very good. Okay, so this ring has the makings of a very, very good ring but the rolls aren't high enough. The accuracy roll is better. If the life roll is better, this would be a very, very good ring. In fact, it's still probably okay enough to sell because someone, if they're looking for accuracy, if they're looking for physical damage, this actually might be a ring I use on one of my builds. And I'll probably put it up for two chaos because if somebody wants it, they're gonna buy it for two chaos, whatever. And if no one buys it, fine. I'm gonna put a resist on it and I'm gonna use it. So we'll put that to the side. Not very good. Uh, if that chaos resist uh, was a higher roll and that life gain on kill was something else, I would probably look to see if that rarity was a suffix or a prefix or both. But I really don't care because the rolls aren't high enough. Whoa. This is a good ring. So it has a decent fizz roll. I believe that's either tier one or tier two. Uh, that is an okay lightning roll. 11% to all resist. It could be better, but it's still good enough. Accuracy could be better, but good enough. And then 20% elemental damage. Everything on here is mediocre, but in conjunction with each other, this is actually a pretty good DPS ring. I don't know how much we could sell this for. It's not that crazy expensive because you got to think about an item like this is why would someone spend, let's just say you looked at this ring and you're like, you know what? That's worth two exalts. Well, the truth is they could probably get something comparable or far better for two exalts. So this has to be priced aggressively for someone to buy it. But like I said, it's pretty good. So I have gone through and checked everything and priced everything and kind of you know figure where i was going to go from here and i remember it was about a 20 chaos investment and as long as everything sells i will make back uh what i put into it in fact i have a couple of items that if i sell those i will definitely make back what i made and all of these items down here are you know in the one to five chaos range none of them are really that good i'm actually not going to price them if somebody wants to buy them they're going to message me and i'm going to i'm going to haggle with them i'm going to ask them to offer and they're going to they're going to give me something in the one to five chaos range and I'm, I'm pretty okay with that some of them might be worth a little bit more but i will look into it as i get it i have no problem with price checking uh items for people especially if it's an item that's a little questionable like uh that ring that i had earlier where was it? This one. Like, I would definitely price check this ring and compare it to other uh, DPS pieces. But there are some that I pulled out that I want to uh, show you guys specifically that I actually did go ahead and price. So first off, I only priced this one uh, so you could kind of see how I would price something. You know, this would actually belong down there uh, in this group over here, but only for sake of example, this could get a prefix or a suffix on it. It's most likely that somebody's gonna buy this and slap uh, resist on there. Then all of a sudden they're going to have a pretty good try, uh, try resist belt. And it's gonna last them for quite a while. This is a really good like leveling belt, especially now how uh, the game, how the penalties work for your resist and everything. So this is a pretty good leveling belt. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect more than two chaos for it. And I want someone to see it and think that's fair and buy it immediately. This belt though, on the other hand, 
I did price it. I was checking uh, for for it, and 12 chaos seems about right. And yeah, it has a prefix open. Someone could put wed on there or whatever else they could put on there. But with a prefix open and with its resist and the reduced flash charges used, 12 chaos seems pretty fair. It might be a little high, but compared to the market value of this belt, 12 chaos is fine. I definitely don't price things in perfect scenarios for the buyer or the seller. Of course, I am the seller. Again, uh, this amulet, two chaos. This is just something that I want someone to see and think that has good resist. I want energy shield. I'll take it, two chaos. It's a band-aid item. You're gonna throw another resist on here. That's really it. I anticipate someone buying this. Then this as actually, uh, this was a little bit harder to price, and I think I may have underpriced it a little bit, if I recall correctly, but a chaos seems pretty fair to me. This has 30, uh, up to 35 to all attributes, which is pretty good considering it has decent resist and mana, and it has a prefix open. So a chaos is a pretty good uh price for this it's good for me and i believe it's good for a buyer now if somebody messages me and offers me six chaos i'm probably going to take it so if anyone who's watching this video is thinking i want that amulet and you message me for six chaos or you'll be able to get it but it's it's a decent amulet when i saw that i knew it i was like look you know this has 30 plus to all attributes it has good resist and is prefix open this is absolutely an item that you're going to put one uh, craft on there and you're going to forget about it until you're actually like min-maxing all of your gear. Uh, this is actually kind of comparable to that other amulet that was 2 chaos. It has a good amount of resist on it. The cold damage is, is whatever. The cold damage actually kind of works for spells as well. You know, especially if you're going with like Glacial Cascade or something like that or an Ice Trap build. Uh, but I'm actually more banking on its physical damage to attacks because it's a pretty good roll. So it has a prefix and a suffix open. So someone might see this and think, okay, cool. You know, it's on an onyx amulet. I'm going to get, every time I say, okay, cool, my phone. Every time I say, okay, cool, my phone uh, turns on and starts listening to me because it thinks I'm saying, okay, Google. Google. <laughs> so anyway the amulet physical damage to attacks it's a good roll resist has a prefix and a suffix open throw some life on here really good amulet two chaos might actually be a little two chaos might be a little underpricing it might, might be a little bit of an underprice so this this ring actually i thought it would be worth more this ring definitely would have been worth more prior to 3.0 because it has a prefix open so you could have put energy shield on here percent energy shield from elrion but now since you can't it's not as good a lot of the rings that are similar to this are actually you know priced at one to two chaos in fact there's a couple of really good rings at one to two chaos but since this has a prefix and a suffix open and you could use it for a, a lot of different things, I'm just gonna put it at four chaos. I don't really anticipate selling this for four chaos anytime soon. And it's something that'll probably drop the price on it. But then again, if somebody messages me and offers me two or three chaos, it's theirs. Or four, someone might just buy it for four because it does have what someone needs. You want mana in this meta, some people want energy shield in this meta. Some people want energy shield and mana. And then a lot of people would probably want 30 plus dexterity. And then, okay, so this ring actually surprised me, this last one. And it was something that I uh, crafted really early on. I remember seeing that and thinking, okay, cool. But as I price this ring, there's only one other comparable ring and it's set at 50 chaos, which I think 50 chaos is a little high for something like this. But it is what it is. I'm gonna throw it up for 25. There is a unique item. Let me show you guys this unique item that uh, requires intelligence and dexterity to like really utilize it. So that could actually be related to that ring right now. 
but I'm not entirely sure. But I was I was priced, or I was I was a I was a little surprised by the value of this, or at least the the existing market value of this item. And you know that one, while I believe 50 chaos is way too high, because 50 chaos is too high because right now it's over two exalts, and trying to get over two exalts for a ring is a pretty it's a pretty tall like it's a it's a pretty tall order, so. I did undercut it significantly, but you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. So yeah, guys, just wanted to share this with you. This has been Craft Session 4. If you have any comments or questions, you can put it down in the comment section down below. Make sure to subscribe for any of the other Path of Exile content that I have coming up. I have some guides coming up. I have some build series that are going through and some other things too. Maybe some like discussion talking points on some other some other uh, hot button topics in the Path of Exile community. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you later. Google. Hi, what can I do for you? You can call me Wabacha. You'd like me to call you Wibaha, is that right? Wabacha. Sorry, I'm having trouble. To change your name, just go to settings. Damn.